Hi everybody and welcome back. I just wanted to give you a quick overview of how my hair coloring process is going. I colored my hair with a demi-permanent color from Ion. I bought it at Sally Beauty. It's been about maybe a week since I colored it and I've gone through three shampoos and this is how my hair is currently holding up. I was 100% gray and I've been gray for between five and six years. Deciding to color my gray was a big decision in some ways and other ways it really wasn't. I have colored my hair in the past. I'm not a newbie to hair color. I do know that there is a color uh, value chart of one through 10, one being jet black and 10 being a very light blonde, or you can go 11, 12 where they consider platinum blondes at that end. So I knew my hair naturally fell within about a six to a seven in that chart and within that value of six to seven there are numerous shades and the shades go either cool or warm and one thing i learned is that for gray hair especially gray because it is resistant it is important to use a color that has an n in its descriptor so even though you might see on that one through 10 chart it says it's a natural which is n you need to make sure that in the color that you're choosing that it is a neutral tone that you're buying. They are much more uh, useful to resistant grays because they are adding back in the yellow that your gray hair is missing. I did not know this until recently. I'm glad I researched it and it really worked out a lot better when I was choosing a color to, color, to do my hair in. Since a neutral color is basically that, it doesn't air on the side of warm or cool. Um, it's just neutral. I was able to then decide whether it was going to work with my skin tone. Now, if it, if I had to go with a cooler shade, I would use a neutral ash. That would be someone who has maybe a ruddy complexion, a pink, a fair complexion, and the ashiness in the color would work well with their cool skin tones. For me, I could go towards the side of using something that was warm or golden in it to help offset the warmth in my skin. If you have olive underlying yellow in your skin, which I do a little bit. And I wanted to though keep it super neutral because this was the first time I was going to color my hair since it went gray. My skin color has gotten paler, but I was not sure how far in which direction to go, if either. I tend to lean towards the warm, but my safest bet was just to keep it neutral for my first time experience with the Demi Permanent Hair Color. So everyone has seen the numbers that are attached to hair color, and this is based on a universal hair color level system. So the level system has 10 numbers, and those numbers help determine the depth level of your natural or virgin hair. This is hair that has never been colored. And within those numbers, you now have different things such as shades and tones that they work with. So keep in mind, number one is going to be the darkest hair color and 10 is going to be the lightest hair color. For example, you might see 4A, 4G, or 4N hair colors. And the A is for an ash or cool tone added to the dye. The G is for a red warm tone added to the dye. And N is for a yellow tone added to the dye. Gray hair is missing the yellow pigment. So you must add the N back in or the gray roots will still not be the right color and appear faded. One thing I did learn from the ion site by people writing reviews was they felt the ion came on very dark so they said to pick two shades lighter than what you would normally want to do and since i'm between a seven or and a six i'm sorry my air conditioner just went on uh it is going to be i was going to lean more towards an eight so i went through to an eight n and that's just a natural light blonde again that blonde does not have um a cool or warm tone to it. It does not have ash in it with an A letter. Or it doesn't have G in it where it's a golden blonde. So I felt comfortable using the 8N, which was a natural light blonde, which sounds weird because my hair is generally more of a medium brown and you would think that would come out too light. But I also wanted to err on the side of caution and not make my hair 
too dark. You can always go darker, but it's much harder to go lighter. Also, because I use the Ion Demi Permanent and they use more of a lettering system as opposed to numbers, depending on which brand of Demi Permanent you would like to use, you may want to look up their numbering system. If your skin airs more towards the cool tones or that's where you want your hair to be, you will look for a certain number that applies to ash. And if it goes more towards a warm, you'll look for those numbers that lean more towards the warmer or the golden or the reds that you would look for in that hair color. So just keep that in mind. Ion does not use a numbering system. It uses a lettering system. And again, remember these color charts are just guidelines. I don't feel it's just like buying a pair of shoes, a pair of shoes. I someone measures my foot and says I'm a size eight or a size seven and I put on a pair of shoes and they don't fit my feet. Well, am I going to use that color uh, if I don't think it fits regardless of what this descriptor says? I probably won't. I don't care that it said light natural blonde. I knew for a fact from previous color experiments that I've done on my hair in past years that hair that says it's coming out blonde was not coming out blonde. And there were lots of people who said that their hair was coming out a lot darker with the demi permanence. And that's because these colors fade out. Now, I think, again, this color is perfect right now. Um, I'm sure as it fades out more, it may not be as complimentary. But again, I said I went lighter, not darker. So keep that rule in mind. So I also did Demi, which is not opening up the cuticle 100%. So this is permanent to the sense that it doesn't ever fully wash out, but it's not permanent, such as like permanent hair dye. That does not wash out at all. My number one rule to follow though, I would always pick out my hair color by going lighter than darker. This is especially true if somehow the results fall short. Remember, the demi-permanent hair colors will also never be 100% removed. They only fade. Demi-permanent, though, can definitely help blend and fade the gray strands into early stages of gray and can actually cover grays 100% later on. While permanent hair dye will obviously cover your gray hair better and probably longer, you have to still remember it is permanent. It will never fade. And if you're not happy with a dark color, you cannot put color over color to lighten your hair. Also, you risk that line of demarcation on your uh, top of your head, which is going to be much more noticeable, especially if you are using a dark color. Now there's exceptions that you, there are dyes on the market that claim to lighten dark hair if you were to make a mistake, but I would still use these with caution because these are using uh, more stringent measures to get the color out of your hair. It usually involves some kind of a bleaching agent and that will be much more damaging to your hair overall. One other thing I learned about gray hair was that you can help prime your gray hair in certain areas so that the color will take better. One of those things was called softening the gray. So you could take a little bit of developer. I did 10 volume developer. I put on a little cotton ball and I wiped it on areas that would be more resistant to hair color, such as my hair here on the sides by my ear. Um, I did not really cover too much in the front here. I do have a little bit of a streak that comes in every so often towards the back where we tend to have that dark, I call it a little skunk line. Um, you might have a, a line where it's uh, pure white and then it gets dark again. So you might want to color over those areas just using 10 developer. It's not combined with the color and it's not just straight color. It's only using the developer on those resistant grays and it's called softening the grays. The best trick you can do is to soften grays. That means you're going to prime the resistant gray areas with straight developer. 10 volume if you're using a demi-permanent and 20 volume or higher if you're using permanent hair dye. You will leave it on for five to eight minutes prior to applying the mixed dye to your whole head. This process really helps open up the cuticle to accept the color better. 
had my piece, I feel that you need to go and find out what your natural hair color is, figure out what your complexion is, whether it's cool or warm, find out um, whether you're going to use demi-permanent or permanent hair color, because they both work differently on your hair. Stick with something that has an N in it, if it's a numbering, a lettering system, or I believe uh, it's a zero, if you're using a numbering system for neutral, where it's going to add back that yellow that you're missing from your gray hair, and it helps with resistant grays. One thing I can say is don't be in a rush to make any uh, rush decisions on coloring your hair. If you feel unsure or skeptical, you can always buy, find semi-permanent color and you can do a quick color change by using that. Fanciful Rinse really works well if that's what you're looking for. You could try that and they come in multiple colors. All you do is you wash your hair, towel it dry, you pour it on your hair, you leave it in your hair, you dry it with a hair dryer and it will produce that color in your hair and you can get a fairly good idea of what that color will look like and if you're not happy it washes right out there is a no commitment with the fanciful rinse so that's one way that you can try out hair colors prior to committing to anything and they have more of the natural hair colors that most people will want to use on their hair another thing is just keep in mind that your skin has gotten lighter uh, you have to decide whether you lean more towards cool or warm uh, as far as your facial or as far as whether you want to add that cool tone, which is an ash tone into your hair color versus a warm tone into your hair color. One thing that ash does is it does not uh, reflect light. It absorbs light, so your hair seems less shiny. When you use a warmer tone, it does look shinier. And so that's something you might want to consider and also you want to make sure you take care of your hair properly after you color it you may still have to use purple shampoos if you go towards a brown you might have to look through for a blue shampoo that will now help offset if you get any brassiness i more of an orange in your hair I shouldn't say brassy sometimes people brassy and yellow goes with the blondes this is more like of an orangey color in your hair that you want to get rid of you'll use a blue shampoo so these are my tips and tricks that I found helpful after looking through many of the websites. I hope this helped you. It was a quick overview and have a great week and I'll see you next time. Bye.